Thank you, Francisco. It's my pleasure now to invite Mr. Dent uh, up on the stage to deliver a message from him to the class of 2018. Thank you, Anthony, for taking great care of our beloved graduates. Thank you. I'm truly honored to be speaking to you today, but before I begin my speech, I would like to say something to Nito's graduating class of 2018 that's actually important. <laughs> Simply put, I care about you. I'm fond of you. I'm proud of you. You have earned my utmost respect. And when you are gone, I shall miss you, and I shall remember you. Okay, the speech. <laughs> I feel like the youth of today isn't ready for or capable of tackling the problems of tomorrow. I weep and fear for the future. <laughs> Socrates expressed these thoughts more than 2,400 years ago. It's foolish. He was wrong then, and he is wrong today. Getting to know these students as I have over the last two years has instilled in me a sense of hope and optimism for the future. Actually, it isn't really like me to speak ill of Socrates. When I was about their age, I learned two important things from him that have shaped me and made me the man I am today. First, Socrates teaches us that the unexamined life is not worth living. I literally agree. One of Nito's most important values is to cultivate a desire to be lifelong learners. I see that in these students. They have adopted this value, not as a mandate, but as a blessing and a virtue. The other thing Socrates teaches us is that wonder is the beginning of knowledge. When Socrates says wonder, he doesn't mean it the way, like, I wonder what's for dinner. He means it the way men in the Bible wondered at the angels or small children wonder at their first rainbow or snowstorm, the way the romantic poets wondered at nature, or the way Moses wondered at the burning bush. You can actually forget everything that we taught you, and if you leave this place valuing learning and looking at the world with joy, enthusiasm, and wonder, then your lives will be full and complete. Nowadays, I prefer more optimistic philosophers like Thomas Aquinas and Cicero and Franco and Arturo Paz <laughs> because these are men who seem to know the secrets of what it means to be a good person and they're men who find happiness and joy in this world. Earlier this year, I forced many of these students to read a French play, No Exit, by Jean-Paul Sartre. It's a fun play about a group of people trapped in a room in hell together. A metaphor for my class? <laughs> Perhaps. Now, before I could teach this play, I had to teach Sartre's most core belief. You see, Sartre was an existentialist. And so Sartre believed that who we are, our essence, is a product of what we say and what we think and what we do, and nothing else. You are the choices that you make, and that's it. And if you want to know something about me, I wholeheartedly agree. These philosophical beliefs, I call them truths, are why I teach English literature. I've done so my entire adult life, because I know that the study of literature is the study of what it, in any language, is the study of what it means to be a human being. Great authors and poets, they reflect truths about humanity. And the very greatest authors, from Shakespeare to Cervantes, they define what it means to be a human being. From my life of teaching and studies of literature, I've discovered one universal truth that hangs in the ether above everything else. Your character is your fate. Who you are defines what will become of you. 
Everything I've ever read from the Bible to waiting for Godot confirms this. Sometimes when teachers forget to write a lesson plan, we guide students into this ridiculous argument about fate versus free will. <laughs> Was Oedipus fated to kill his father or did his choices lead to... <sighs> we were just messing with you. We were just killing 22 minutes because we know that Macbeth or Willie Loman or Harry Potter's character is what leads to their eventual fates. But the same is true for us. You see, whom you choose to be defines what will become of you. Thus, your character is your fate. And knowing you, Nito's class of 2018 like I do, I think your futures will be glorious. Tomorrow is standing before you all. It is bright, like the sun. That said, life isn't always easy. I'm not sure if anyone's ever told you this before, but our lives are only a collection of days, and all of those days are valuable. A few of those days will be filled with sorrow and loss, but those days will be balanced with times of joy and blessing. Many of your days will be filled with work, not quite so many if you're a teacher, but <laughs> Please don't do that to yourselves. In your darkest hour, you may wonder if life is worth living. You may wonder if it's noble to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune, as Hamlet asked. Hamlet, poor Hamlet, he failed to see what Shakespeare knew and taught so well. Life is precious. It's not a philosophical question. Being is better than not being. Every tragedy I've ever taught you, indeed every tragedy ever written, ever written, confirms this point. The French philosopher Albert Camus, despite being the voice of nihilism, agrees with me. <laughs> during, during World War II, Camus wrote his most famous work about the ancient myth of Sisyphus. In this philosophical treatise, Camus sought to answer the question of how should we confront the absurdity of life? How can we make our lives meaningful and joyful? His answer guides me, and so I want to share it with you. Camus teaches us that Sisyphus was punished by the gods for his hubris and deceitfulness. He was forced to roll an immense boulder up a steep hill, only for it to roll back down again uh, the instant he reached the top, and maddeningly, they would give Sisyphus a new batch of know-nothing ninth graders to start pushing back up that hill again. <laughs> Don't laugh at me. <laughs> what we're celebrating here today is the fact that you've just pushed a really big rock up a really big hill. In about 45 minutes, everybody's going to take your picture as you toss your hats up in the air. Those pictures never come out, by the way, but you can try. When they do, I want you to hoop and holler and be happy. But a few minutes later, as you're crawling around looking for your mortarboard because you forgot to take the tassel off before you threw it, I want you to remember, you're freshmen again. <laughs> You're off to push another big rock up another hill. And don't go thinking that college is the greatest or last border, boulder of them all. Sisyphus's punishment was eternal. Mortgages, marriage, children, businesses, jobs, taxes, owning a cat. Life never ends until it does. Camus, knowing that Sisyphus is a symbol for us all, concluded his work writing, the struggle itself towards the heights is enough to fill a man's heart. One must imagine Sisyphus happy. Camus and Sartre, they teach us that we can choose to be happy. Sure, Sisyphus's life was a never-ending series of challenges and frustrations, which is not so hard for an English teacher to imagine. But imagine a man full of joy despite his daily toil. 
Imagine Sisyphus smiling. <laughs> My profound hope and prayer for you all is that you will be happy. And so in my last words to you, I want to share with you what I've discovered about happiness. First, I hope you all live in the moment. Carpe diem. Forgive the circular reasoning, but to be happy, you have to be happy. You can't schedule your happiness for later. You can't spend your whole life saying, I'll be happy when school is over, or I'll be happy when it's the weekend, or I'll be happy when my kids go away to college. <laughs> Be happy now. Choose it for yourself. Make it part of your character and let that define your fate. Also, you need to understand the secret of happiness. Happiness is beyond the grasp of the shallow or the selfish or the spoiled. True happiness is a paradox. It belongs to those who care about others more than themselves. You can have everything. Why, you could be the President of the United States of America. But if you only care about yourself, you cannot be happy. <laughs> if you're unhappy, work to make others happy and you will find happiness for yourself. And lastly, forgiveness. It's the most noble of all human traits. These are pessimistic times. Fight it. Make your lives meaningful. See the best in people. Choose to let go of anger, wrath, envy, and pride. As I close, I need to give you your two homework assignments. They're, they're really life work assignments. The first, change the world and make it better. It's what we prepared you for. It's what's expected of you. And also, love your neighbor, because it is both a guarantee of your own happiness and a path to a blessed life. I wish you all the best. Thank you. <laughs>